In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can incorporate a number of different LLMs and LLM providers into your application. I'm going to be showing you how to use Amazon Bedrock, and then I'm also going to be showing you how you can incorporate something like PortKey as well as AI Gateway into your project to be able to leverage a ton of different models. Just to give you an idea, by the end of the video, you'll have an idea on how you can incorporate all of these different models into your project, as well as having a singular schema where you'll be able to interact with them and simply swap them out with a couple strings. I'm going to be showing you how to incorporate it within the Answer Engine project that I have going on here. So if I just demonstrate it here and I say, hello world, what this will do is once I type in that at keyword and I select that Anthropic model, this is using Bedrock from AWS right now. Bedrock has a number of different models. If you haven't used AWS before, you'll probably get a few hundred dollars in credits. And the nice thing with that is you'll be able to use them for something like Bedrock. So once you're within the AWS console and you've made an account, or if you already have one, just search for Amazon Bedrock. And once you're within there, you can just go ahead and click started. Now, if this is the first time that you've used Bedrock, you will have to request access to the models here. So the way that you do that is if you just go over to the models that you wanna gain access to, and you'll see this little area here at the top where you'll have to request model access. And then within here, you can just go and select which models you wanna gain access to. So you can just go and click modify model access, and then say if I want to have these models from Titan by Amazon, I can just go ahead and check those. You can go next on the screen here, and then you can submit those. So some of the models, if I remember correctly, you do have to put in a little bit of text just explaining how you're gonna be using the model, but otherwise it is pretty quick to get access to the models. You can see here, I have access granted to those models that I just requested access for. Within AWS, there is a playground. They have it broken out into chat, text, and images. So just to give you a quick overview on what this looks like. So you can just go ahead and select your model here. If you want to use Stable Diffusion XL, you can click through. And then if I just say, generate a photo of a cat on a rocket ship. You can play around with the configuration a little bit here, the size, whether you want landscape, portrait, negative prompts. But what we're gonna be focused on primarily in this video is the text generation models or the chat completion models. Within the chat playground here, if I go ahead and select the models, we're going to be incorporating Cohere and Anthropic. So right now in the Answer Engine project, I have the Grok models as the default models here. Now, what we're going to be doing here is I'm gonna be showing you how you can include basically any models within Amazon Bedrock. By the end of the video, you'll see how to also incorporate other models outside AWS even if you'd like. Basically, all that you need to get started is you can play around in the playground here. So say if you wanna see what Claude 3 Haiku looks like, if I just select that and I type, hello world, You'll see that you can play around in here just like it's a chat gpt like interface now the other nice thing with these models is you can also upload images as well you can go ahead and you can see if it's a good model for your potential use case now if we go over to the foundation models tab here and we click the base models so there's going to be one important part that we're going to be looking for in all of these different models and if we just go over to the model that we want to use if we just scroll down a little bit here if we look at the api request you'll see that there is the model ID. This is gonna be the important piece that we need when we're plugging within our application, which I'll show you in just a moment. But before I get into that, I wanna hop over quickly to PortKey. PortKey is a really great tool. There's an analytics suite built into it. There's a logging suite built into it. So there's also an area where you can set up and configure prompts. Say if you have a really good prompt or certain prompt templates that you wanna use, this is a good place where you can house these. But what we're going to be mainly focused on within PortKey is how to set up their AI gateway as well as how to configure what are known as virtual keys. What virtual keys allow you to do is this allows you one place where you can store all your environment variables. Say if you're often hopping around in and out of all of these different LLM providers, whether it's AWS or Google or Anthropic or OpenAI or whatever it is, this will allow you a place where you can put in all your environment variables and then as soon as you wanna use them within an application, you can use what are known as virtual keys. So you can see I have these virtual keys that are representations of my actual keys. So these are gonna be things that I can put within my application and keep all these keys managed within PortKey. Now, the other cool thing is once you have it set up, you'll notice that as soon as you start using it, you'll be able to see a lot of useful information within their logs. So here you see that I'm playing around with Claude, 
or cohesive or anthropic. You can see how many tokens are being used, how much it costs, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So there's a ton built into this, but I'm not going to really be focused too much on the platform in this video. So now I want to hop over to AI Gateway, and this isn't to be confused with Cloudflare's AI Gateway. Now what AI Gateway allows you to do is it allows you to route to over a hundred LLMs with one fast and friendly API, as they're self-described here. What this allows you to do is you can essentially pass in the provider that you want to use, and then the model string, and then you'll have that OpenAI type schema. So you can use the OpenAI SDK, or you can alternatively use the port key SDK as well. So now just to show you how to set this up in Amazon Bedrock's context. Now to get your API keys from Amazon Bedrock, there's a few different ways. So the quote unquote proper way, you can go ahead and go on over to their identity center. And there's a ton of really good videos on how to actually set all of that up, which I encourage you to check out if you're interested. But if, but let's say you want to get up and running really quickly and you don't necessarily want to learn the ins and outs on how to use a dev. So what you can do here is if you just click your name in the top right hand corner here, then you go down to security credentials. Once you're on the security credentials page, you can scroll down to access keys. And what you will be able to do is you can just create an access key if you haven't already created one. So you can have up to two at any given time. And once you've clicked through to create the access key, it will show you the access key ID as well as the secret key. Once you have those keys on screen, what you can do there in another tab is you can open port key. You can click create and we'll just say AWS credentials. We'll click bedrock and then you can paste in your secret access key as well as your access key ID. Once you've done that, you can select your region and click create. And then you'll see that now we have our AWS credentials. So now that it's in here, we have this generated virtual key that we'll be able to use within our application. Now, if you're using port key, the important thing to remember is there's going to be your virtual key from this list of virtual keys here, but then there is also going to be the API key for port key itself. So just to give you an idea on what this looks like within your application, the way that I set this up within the answer engine project, but it would be similar in other projects as well, is you're going to put your port key API key, which you'll paste in from that page that I just showed you. Key is going to go within the environment variable, just like this. So now that we have the security piece all set up, I'm going to show you how I'm going to incorporate this within my project. If I want to just reach for a model that I don't already have. So if I just reach for something like Mistral AI, and I reach for a model that isn't available on all the different services, which is Mistral Large. So you can only access this from some cloud providers as well as from Mistral AI themselves. And if I go ahead down to the API request, what we're gonna need here is the model ID. So I'm just gonna highlight that for a second, then I'm gonna hop over to VS Code here. So I have a file here of the quote unquote mention tools that I'm using. And the way that I set this up is what we're going to be able to do is if I just write a comment and I say AI gateway port key, and then I'll say Mistral large. So what we can do here, we'll let it auto complete. So the ID is going to correlate with the model string here. So I can put in the model string here and then for the name here, I'm just going to leave it as Mistral large. And then you can swap out the logo as well. So if you want to reach for a different logo here, you can plug it in. So what I've been using for the logos is the site brand fetch. So if I just go ahead and reach for their lightweight logo here. So in this case, they have a JPEG, which I'll just go ahead and I'll copy the address for, and then we'll put within the logo just like that. And then here we're going to be specifying the function name. And the last thing that we're going to have here is we're going to have a name for the function that we're going to be using. And the reason that I set this up this way is I'm going to set up these app mentions in a way where you can build it out with using different model providers, or if you want to use something like AI agents or workflows, you'll be able to include those things in this type of setup over the coming weeks and months as I have time to build out some of that stuff. Now for this function name itself for port key AI gateway, that is referencing this method within the function tools here. And essentially all that it is, you can focus on primarily this portion here and this portion here. So you can think of it in two chunks here. So we have the chat completions itself, which is identical to OpenAI. So you could just swap this out for OpenAI as well, if you wanted to use the OpenAI package. So here we're going to have our system message. In this case, in the application, I'm specifying to always respond in Markdown be verbose, never mention the system message. And then in here, we're going to be passing in the user message. 
The other thing to note is depending on the model that you're using, you're going to be able to change out the max tokens. In the case of Anthropic, I believe it's up to 200,000 tokens that you can use for that model. But there are some other models like the Cohere models that are hosted on AWS where the limit isn't quite as high. I think for some of the Cohere models, it is just over 4,000 tokens of context that you can pass in. I believe the max tokens is a requirement for Anthropic in particular. It might be the case for other models as well. Within the model, we have our mention tool here, and that's going to be our model ID. So that's going to be what ultimately gets passed in to our chat completion, and that's going to be what selects the model that we get a response back. So once we have that, all that we're doing in this last piece here is this is going to be how we facilitate streaming out that message as well as sending back the final response. Depending on the model provider, there's slightly different messages that you'll get back to indicate that the model has finished responding. And that's going to be within our application, how we move the logo from the start of the input box to the right hand corner that you see here within the application. So now if we go back to our application and I say Mistral large, I select that and I say, tell me a short joke. We see that we get a response back and then you can go ahead and play around with some of the other ones. So you can go ahead and say Anthropic. We can say, hello world. Then there we go. So you can play around with different models. I built this out really because this is something that I wanted to use. I often hop around in between different model providers, whether it's Claude or OpenAI or Perplexity. I like the idea of potentially having all of these different models just within one place where I can just easily reach for them with something like an at mention. That's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something like how to use a bedrock, how to tie them all together within an application. But if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.